Extra Minutes. Adam Jonathan, take me back to that night, how it all unfolded for you. I remember, I remember the night that it happened. The phone rang at approximately, oh, I can't quite remember, quarter to one, and from the emergency department telling me that they had an ambulance inbound with a young man who'd sustained a penetrating head injury and that was neurologically not well off. And uh, I essentially clawed my way out of bed and and uh, got in the car. And um, I remember I arrived at the hospital approximately well, 15 minutes later and uh, I'm not quite sure whether I called you then, but the next call was from the emergency department that I distinctly remember saying he's arrived and um, they're waiting for me. And they I chuckled a bit because they asked me if I was coming in. <laughs> Sometimes I'd like it was an option. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in there, what do you, what do you see and what goes through your mind as a, as a surgeon? I was, I was confronted with this poor unconscious boy who was, who was obviously lying flat on the bed with uh, an obvious um, steel bar through his head. Um, I remember that his parents were at the bedside weeping dreadfully. You must have had immediate thoughts. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I remember this is probably only the second type of in, this injury that I've seen so far in my career and you, you just have this voice in you that says, wow, and the next one is, how are you going to sort that out? Our biggest worry was if it had injured arteries or veins within the brain, but it seemed to go through an area that, that had avoided those and and you know, all that was left really to do was, was to take it out. Did you have that conversation about prognosis? We did, but it's, it's very difficult at that early stage to prognosticate. I guess I was carrying a, a good deal of internal dialogue with regards to a bad outcome. With the scans, what did they reveal in terms of how much damage had been done? Again, we, we could see the exact tract that the, that the pole had taken and, and we could see that it went through the, the area of the brain controlling the movement of his left side. Um, and we could also see where it had come out. But it was really more the damage that it hadn't done. It really hadn't seemed to affect the arteries or veins of the brain or the very important deep parts of the brain that are... Uh, that we know that when they're injured, patients do very poorly. We do occasionally leave foreign bodies in, in the brain, but when it's a pole going through from one side to the other, you can't really leave it there. And we had to talk about the exact sort of uh, details and of how to remove that, whether we would, um, you know, cleaning up the area around where it had been in to try and re reduce the infection risk. Um, but also whether we would do less damage by actually pushing it through and uh, you know, cutting it off and pushing the bit that was left through. But in the end, we decided it was safer to, to pull it back out. How close did he come to, to being a vegetable? It's a rudimentary term, but yeah. how, close, how close was it? Well, really, the, you know, the track that the, that the bar took through his brain um, it was, was as good as one could hope for in terms of really what it missed rather than what it got. I, you know, not, notwithstanding he has some ongoing problems with the movement of his left side, um, there are so many vital structures that would have either taken his life at that time or later on if they'd been affected. If you're going to get a pole through your head, it was the perfect place. Yeah, <laughs> which is a big if, but it was. It really, honestly, you know, it was honestly unlucky that it happened, but lucky with where the pole went through. What are the long-term prospects for him? I think the long-term prospects are very good. He, he does have the problems with his left side, but they're improving and they're continuing to improve. Uh, he'll probably be left with some impairment, but not to the extent that it will affect the, his day-to-day -day life. I mean, he should drive, he should be able to work, he should be able to surf and do all the other things that he enjoys doing. Um, the fact that he's young and this has occurred to him and, and just being 18 means that his brain's capacity to recover is very good. So uh, I'm very optimistic that, that we'll be able to see him doing all the sort of stuff that he likes doing. He's always done and, and wanted to do um, long into the future. I hope that he gets to a stage in his life where he can forget that he was ever in hospital. He's a lovely kid and he's fiercely determined that helps. Yeah, it does. And, and the support of those around him, his, his family, is just all of that you know, means he's, I, I've got very, very uh, high hopes for him.